Now, back in the early 1900s, a little boy in Canada wondered where butterflies disappeared to in the winter, and he ended up spending 40 years trying to find the answer. And it was an extraordinary answer. The tiny creatures travel almost 2,000 miles to Mexico. Now Fred Urquhart's incredible story is being told for the first time. Mike Slee, the award-winning director of Bugs 3D, has spent the last five years filming millions of butterflies on their journey and retracing the scientists' steps. Mike's with us on the sofa. We're going to talk to him in just a moment. First, though, it really is worth taking a look at this. Yes, Mike's here now. Just tell us, Mike, that scene we're seeing there, because it it, it's a dramatisation around real-life footage, isn't it? So that's, that, that's right. the story of the, this a scientist who was seeking we, we follow two stories, really. We follow the story of the butterfly's migration through North America, up into Canada, down back to Mexico. But at the same time, we follow the story of young Fred Urquhart as he then grows up, becomes a man, wants to learn where the butterflies go. And it's his journey intercut with the journey of the butterflies. Quite, um, what fascinated me about this is that it's not just one generation of butterflies that makes this amazing journey. And I'd never heard of a homing instinct being passed through generations. You'll have to explain to our viewers what I'm talking about. Well, it, it's a very, very, um, it's a key part of the story, really. And it's still baffling scientists, which is sort of reassuring in one way. There's something we don't quite know. But yes, it takes three generations of the butterfly to uh, populate or repopulate North America. But the fourth generation is called a super generation. Now, it lives about five, ten times longer than the other three generations. It then flies 2,000 miles, in this case from Toronto, to the forests in central Mexico where they didn't know they went there until 1972. Um, and it can live for five months. Um, it is unable to breed until February comes, the sun shines on it, it genetically matures and then is able to mate and then it then starts the cycle again and another three generations uh, well, in amongst that extraordinary tale are some of these, these yeah, imagery. These are, yes. I mean, look at this. Little, now, now what, what stage is the butterfly at here? That's very recently hatched. The size, it's just come out of the egg. The egg is the size literally of a pinhead. And then it gets, as it eats, it gets larger. It gets about 50 times larger over the period before it then pupates and becomes a butterfly. Um, it was quite interesting to see the scale. I mean, we're talking about something probably, you know, that size by the time it's, it's finished eating. Yeah. And that's all it does is eat. And uh, some little bits of uh, trivia, I suppose, that I picked up on. I didn't realise, and you can see these close-ups. Yeah. Um, that, that's, of course, CGI, that, that particular That's sequence. the only CGI in the, in the film, yes. in fact. We, we couldn't things, fly a mile high. Well, I, I always <laughs> imagine that butterflies just flitted around just above your hedge and the flowers, but they fly up to a mile. That's up, right. Up in the sky. They've been seen by airline pilots, these ones. Um, they, they catch the jet streams because in, they, they're travelling so far. They use every trick in the book. They are also navigating using a clock, an internal clock, which is synchronized to the sun. So that as the sun moves across the sky, they can, f I mean, they're heading towards a small forest in the middle of Mexico from Toronto. It's, it's extraordinary. And scientists really don't have any idea about, or, or do they? Well, th because there's they debate. Because they so complicated, the, yeah. the generational thing, yeah. their, their homing devices, the way they fly. The, the debate really is, which one of the sort of homing devices, as it were, is the lead one? And in the film, we sort of describe it as an insect GPS. But it uses the sun, it uses pheromones, it uses magnet, the magnetic field of the Earth, it uses wind, it, you, and it's really got a kind of redundancy, really, in navigating, so that if any one of those isn't working quite right, they can sort of home in on the other. I think we can see one of the, uh, one of the sequences where the caterpillar is turning into the butterfly. Let's have a look now.
Inside, specialized cells nourish new tissue growth. Fed oxygen by hundreds of fine breathing tubes, her brain, heart, and digestive tract change shape and size. It's like something from a sci-fi, this, this particular sequence. What's really interesting about this is we used medical imaging. We used MRI scans and micro CT scans of the inside. So that really is what's going on inside. And our animators then turned it into a 3D graphic. So what you're seeing is what actually happens inside a chrysalis. Are you bug mad? No. <laughs> it's, it's one of nature's most amazing stories, Complete Metamorphosis number one. And the film I made 10 years ago now, the first film I made, um, was why we ended up making this one, because there was one scene in that, in, in a river in Borneo, where the, the butterflies fly along the river and into the cinema. And we said, can we make a whole film around butterflies? Because the audience were loving it. As you were saying with, with your visit to the cinema, you, you're, you, the temptation. Well, what occurred to me was that if you have a problem with uh, fluttering <laughs> things, because the combination of the sound effects and the 3D imagery is very intense. I mean, it is quite an intense experience. It really if is. If you didn't like butterflies, you really don't want to be I, there. I think that should be the warning, maybe, <laughs> yes, is, is that if, if you've got any worries with butterflies... Title, yeah, suppose, exactly, really. it is in the title. They have no. very long tongues, butterflies. Yes. I didn't know that. They, they, and they use them, everybody thinks they sort of suck with them, but it's, they actually use the, 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 the nectar will actually move up the proboscis as it's being able to feed and the one story well the fact I like was that they they taste with their feet before they actually put their proboscis into a flower they've checked it out with their feet how do you know uh, scientists told me <laughs> <laughs> it took you five years butterfly <laughs> yes exactly it took you five years did you think it would take that long and was it worth it uh, it took two and a half years to raise the money because it was a very expensive film mm. to make and then we did the same route as the butterfly twice in order to get the shots we needed filming with slow motion cameras and micro cameras what's and, the next insect on your list uh, who knows it'll be when there's a story when there's a human story that ties to the insect or the animal because that's my passion is telling the human story and the and the wildlife story together thank you very much for coming thanks mark it looks beautiful thank Good you with it. flight of the butterflies is on at the british film institute imax theater in london from the 6th of september if you can't wait till then it's on in cumbria now